Hey, good morning. I'm horticulturist Gary Bachman. And you know what day it is? It's time for another Ask Me Anything Southern Gardening Facebook Live. So this is the time. Get your questions in early. If you're, if you're already watching, I know some people will be coming in late and that, that's fine. I've got a little bit of things to share here um, that we're doing here at the Urban Nano Farm, you know, because I'm gardening just like everybody else as we go into this colder weather, you know, and what are we going to do? I was just talking to Ellen before we started. And here in Ocean Springs, we're looking at 39 tonight. I know folks have had colder temperatures than that already this year. But, you know, here in the Gulf Coast, 39 degrees, that's starting to get cold. And I'm not sure I like that. But we have to put up with it. So that, that's what we'll do. Um, since, you know, we'll just wait for questions to come in. I've just got some things to share from the Nano Farm. We're still growing peppers and tomatoes, and I've got to I've got to show you this one really cool tomato that that we're growing out there right now this this fall. That this is kind of a I don't know a little pear shape one part of the indigo series. This is indigo kumquat, and you can see I've been I've been watching these little tomatoes, and they've got this bright purple skin and it's interesting this is the side that's facing out towards the sun the side that's facing in into the interior of the plant is the some lighter green and i and i've been watching these and really been happy with them because when they start to ripen up look at that isn't that a gorgeous little tomato this is indigo kumquat this is a little indeterminate uh member of the um of the indigo series. We also grew um, in the spring this year, we grew the, um, the cherry drops, which are kind of a, this, this brown and, and, and kind of a reddish burgundy color, Re really, really pretty too. But I've, I've been pleased with these. My plants are loaded. So I don't know what's gonna happen with 39 degrees because I can't, I'm not in a position to cover them or anything to provide protection. And it just, they just may have to survive in our garden, just like everything else in my garden. You know, it's survival of the fittest here at the Urban Nano Farm. So, but this is one, this is one of the, the fun things and one of the drawbacks of growing tomatoes on the Gulf Coast in the fall season. If we get an early cold snap, boom, tomatoes are done. We have picked fresh tomatoes in the past on Christmas Day with with no with no cold you know in there so it's always you roll the dice sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but wanted to share that with you and another one i wanted to show you with some of the peppers um in in daily doses earlier this year i was showing you these little i, I call them bikino they're um little brazilian bird beak peppers and the, the um, yellow ones are just starting to um color up the, the plants are full of these i had cut the, the pepper plants back because because th they were just producing so much i just couldn't do anything with them all but but they're starting to produce again right in time for the cold snap but the, the red ones are are going great too they just haven't started coloring up yet and another little cute pepper this was that ahi cherapita got this from baker's creek and Baker's Creek advertises of this as the world's most expensive pepper. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm not sure about that. But let me tell you, these things are tiny. You can kind of see them in, in relationship to my, my fingers. They're tiny, but they are hot. And I think cherapita means little molten balls of the sun. They're that they're that kind of hot, but they're really, they're really fun. We've pickled some that are just about ready here to try them. But that, that's, an, that's, an, that's another one that, that we've got going on here. And various bells and some of the, the specialty Southwest peppers we, we, still have, we still have going. Oh, and I'm looking here. We have got some, some questions coming in. Dawn Marie loves the Bikino peppers. I mean, they're fantastic. I first saw those as pickled in, uh, at a salad bar and wondered what they were. I mean, they're full of seeds. You got to get past that, but, but they're a pretty tasty little pepper. And I like the yellows and the reds. And I should put at this point, let me just put the question um, out there 
because you know this is ask me anything and there, there's gonna there's gonna be door prizes right so the so the question this month is going to be what would be the perfect gardening gift you would like to receive or to give um, I'm going to share some gift ideas today of some Garden, gardening tools and items that I that I found that I think are pretty cool that and will and will help help make gardening easier. And I know you know gardeners would just love to get some get some of these. So I'll I'll share some of these as, as we go on. And then Dawn Marie's got the question: Do you have issues with snakes, and not the good ones in in your garden produce? Yeah, yeah, we do have we do have snakes here. Um, we live right on a drainage easement in Ocean Springs, and yeah, we have had had snakes in the yard before. I I don't call them a problem because we kind of see them after, you know, after they've been there. In the past, because we use bird netting to protect our our tomatoes from well, from the birds, we have found in the past that the snakes, if that netting goes all the way to the ground, get caught in it and they and they pass away. Um, water moccasins. Haven't seen copperhead. My neighbor just saw a big copperhead here last week when he was cleaning out his part of the easement. So they're here. Um, earlier this year in a Southern Gardening TV segment shoot we were doing here at the Urban Nano Farm, we noticed that there was a snake caught in the, um, in the bird netting, but it was all the way up underneath the eaves of the house. And we took about 15 minutes to cut it out and really release it unharmed. We we posted that as a daily dose. If you want to if you want to see that, you can go back to that. Or if somebody will send me an email and remind me to repost it, I'd be happy to share that. But yeah, the, yeah, there, there's there's snakes. Um, you know, there, there's really no good way to, you know, keep them out of your yard except to keep keep your yard tidy. You, you know, don't let um, pot piles of of yard waste and things pile up in your yard, places to hide, that that kind of thing. And always, 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 if you've got something laying on the ground, always pick it up so it opens up away from you, just in case there is a snake. Um, now, one one more snake story, and we'll and we'll keep going. Um, earlier this year, I was prepping earth boxes and put and putting plastic down. And I took the plastic cover off of one of my earth boxes and there was a little gray snake all coiled up in there. I went one way, it went the other way. We scared the bejeebies out of each other. But other, other than that, no, we don't really have, have, an, have an issue. You just have to be careful out there in, in, the, in the yard and garden. Okay, let, let's, see, let's see here. Oh, we are, we are starting to load up. Um, Judy Wood, good morning. Suggestions to eliminate cypress vine that overtakes my garden every year. Um, we've tried pulling and mulching. Yeah, cypress vine is a, you know, is, is, one, is one of these um, morning glory relatives. I mean, it, it's, a pr it's a pretty vine, but once it gets going, it seeds like crazy and you, and you will have it. Um, pulling and mulching, it's that will help a little bit, but it's really not going to. What you need to do when you see those seedlings coming up, you you, you have to be aggressive with it. And and I would just I would spray the the young um, cypress vine seedlings with Roundup. I think that's the way you're going to have to take care of it. Just because you've got so much of a seed bank build up from previous years, you're, it's just going to continue. And so don't mess around with it. Just 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 get rid of it. That that's that's what I would do. Now, Gail asks why my figs are turning purple. The fruit is still small. You want to know something, Gail? I've, I'm not a fig guy. I, I don't know. I've, I've got the first figs that we're putting in our yard here at the Urban Nano Farm this year, and they're black Italian figs, and these are some um, plants that I traded my friend Roxanne De Paula from QVC traded her a duet beauty berry. She traded me black Italian figs cuttings from the tree that her father planted. I mean, it's a really cool story. But the, these are going to be the first figs in my yard. I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna find out. So I you know that's not not much of a 
not much of a good answer for you, but that's, I mean, you, you probably could contact um, Extension, uh, one of the fruit specialists, give you, give you a little more information with that. So Sue Wessing, how to process turmeric. Um, I don't know, Sue, does that come from the, um, the um, videos that we did of growing turmeric here at the house? Um, the way I like to use turmeric is like you use with um, ginger. And we'll, we'll put the tubers in the freezer. And then when we want to use it for, for seasoning, just go ahead and, and run it over the microplane and, and, and shred it that way. That, that's, that's the way I use it. We want to put it in rice dishes and, th and, things, like, and things like that. Okay, so Gail Daigle, a full earth box with trellis and wheels. I'm, I'm assuming that's what you want for Christmas, right? And that is a fantastic you know, item to put on your Christmas wish list. And Sue Wessing, I would love to have a garden kneeler for Christmas. You, you know, if you've got bad knees like me, I've got a knee replacement, Sue. And yeah, you got you got to have some kind some kind of help getting down on those knees if it's padding or you know a kneeler. I've got, and I don't know if I've ever showed that on the daily doses. I've got one of those um, garden scoots, one of those four wheel with a tractor seat on it and, and, kind, and kind of scooting around, the, scooting around the yard. And that works out pretty darn good. So you might want to take a look at something like that. And Jane, I love potting soil. One of my best gifts for my husband was 50 bags of potting soil and 50 bags of cotton burr compost. That's fantastic. Um, several years ago, when we were first starting to develop the urban nano farm here, one year I got for Christmas, I think it was 2009, Kate bought me 16 tons of crushed limestone. That was the gift that just kept right on giving, getting that all spread out. I had to hire the neighborhood kids to come in and spread rock for me. Yeah, but that was, that was fun. You, you got to appreciate those really thoughtful gifts like that potting mix and crushed, crushed limestone. Okay. And Gene Moore, what's the best practice to grow honey locusts in my pastures? I, I just want to ask one of the, uh, ask you a question, Gene, why do you want to grow honey locusts in the pasture? I, is, is there, is there a particular reason or just put, put that in the comments and Alan will put that up. When, when we when we get, when we get to that, um, since we're starting to talk about um, Christmas gifts, if you if you really want want to give a great gift for somebody, um, you can you can look at one of these weeders. This is this is called a cobra head, and this is the small version, and it's called a cobra head because you know it, it kind of looks like a cobra all um, all coiled up, but this works fantastic to dig down in and, lo and loosen up those, those weeds that we get in, in our, in our um, flower beds. I really like it in containers for the weeds that get in there. It goes really easily through the potting mix. It'll go really easily through raised bed mix. But, the, but this, is, this is a neat little here. I'm, I'm going I'm backwards here. But Cobra Head is, is, the, is the brand. I don't know if, oh, and it, and it is facing the right way. But that, that's, that's, a, that's a really neat, little tool that that i use and i've showed i've showed me using this on on daily on daily doses in, in the in the past okay now catherine my friend catherine how are you doing today one of those hole digging drill bits would be a great gift oh they would you're talking catherine you're talking about the max bit and i have shown that on daily doses we have shown that on southern gardening tv um it really makes digging holes for um if you want to say for potted plants really good it's it's not quite like a uh, a bulb auger it it's more of a, it's more of a digging tool that drills straight lines down in down in the in the ground and you just take a, a bedding plant out of a pot and just pop and just pop it in there but the website is themaxbit.com and that that'll that'll take you that'll take you there. That's a, a made in Mississippi product, which is which is pretty cool. 
And let's see here. Brittany is, is saying the perfect gardening gift I would like to receive would be a mobile tool storage caddy. Yeah, because it's, it's really irritating when you have to make three or four trips back and forth to the garage or the shed, right? So if you could just wheel it, wheel everything out there um, by, you know, all at once would make things a lot easier. I know that would be, uh, that would be a, a great, a great uh, gift. Okay, then Catherine's asking, is great success with Dolly as possible in South Mississippi, or is it a waste of time and money? I, I'll tell you, Catherine, that is a loaded question. Um, you, you, can be, I, you can be successful with Dahlia's in South Mississippi. Um, the personal experience, you know, way down where I'm at on the coast, um, we, do, we just don't get the right conditions in the winter for those tubers to overwinter successfully and they, and they tend to rot. So I, I would, now, now here's me, I'm going to go promote our industry a little bit. I don't, I don't see what's wrong with you planting dahlias as an annual crop. Um, think about the, um, the rate of return that you get on it. You know, if, if you get three months of blooming out of that dahlia, you, you know, to, to me, I, th I think that that's pretty good, for, you know, for an annual crop. And I always go back to the, um, to the example of poinsettias. You, you know, we don't have a problem spending 15, 20, 25 dollars or more for a poinsettia that's good for five weeks, you know, for the holiday season. And a lot of people, once the holidays are done, boom, it goes out into the, into the compost pile. So, so great success with dahlias in, in South Mississippi. I say yes, but primarily grown as an annual crop. And doing it that way, you're always be able to mix up, you know, your dahlia selection if you wanted. And, and you, su you support our growers too, who, who produce such great product for us. Okay, let's see here. And LaDebra, oh, this is a great idea. Bought a used golf bag and holder at the thrift store and roll it around, the tools around it, it, the golf cart. That, that's a brilliant idea, you know, and the golf bag holds your long tools and there's pockets in it for your, you know, for your hand tools. Great idea. Um, time for another gift idea. And th this is one, and no, I mean, the, the, the neighborhood here in Ocean Springs, you know, I don't have to, you know, carry around a crocodile Dundee knife out in the garden. But this is a great um, tool. This is it's a it's a Japanese tool. It's called a hori hori or ori ori. I don't know if the H is um, silent or not. But but this is a tool I like. It's got the serrated edge on it. It's got the the sh the sharper edge, you, and you could sharpen this and make it as sharp as sharp as you want. But this is great for digging out roots, digging digging out root balls, um, making. Uh, seed trenches. This is a fantastic tool. And this is from DeWitt. This, this is a tool that's made over in Holland. And it's, it, it, is, it, is, it is really fantastic. DeWitt makes quality tools. And I, I've, sh I've shown, shown these in the past. Um, I'm giving everybody these ideas for Christmas gifts because don't wait. Uh, everything garden related is we've heard of supply chain issues. It's within the garden industry too. And we just, we're going to run out of supplies again this spring. I, ha I have a feeling like we have the last, the last couple of years. So don't wait on, on these, on these Christmas type gifts for, for folks. Okay. Let's see here. Where, where are we at? Question wise, is it too late to trim back perennials? from Ralph Pat. Um, if you're talking about pruning back perennials, I say it's too early. Um, one of the things that'll happen if you, if you prune plants back now before we really get some decent cold weather, you know, as decent as we get in Mississippi, those plants might take that as a signal to start growing again. And then cold weather hits 
and you have a chance that you could, that you could lose the, lose those plants. So I wouldn't do any heavy pruning back. Now, I, I will admit that, you know, sometimes some of our perennials tend to look pretty ratty now. And if you wanted to go in and kind of tidy them up, uh, that, that would be fine. But, but any heavy pruning back, um, I, I would wait to do to after first of the year. Wait, wait till late winter, really early spring before the new growth starts would be the, the optimal time to do it. Okay. And Sue Wessing, drying. Oh, you're talking about drying the turmeric. I I've never I've never done done the 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 um, drying of the turmeric. I've always used it kind of from a fresh fresh perspective. Um, Really, I've, I've looked at it from the drying of turmeric. I'd just rather go buy a bottle at the store. That, that's, ju that's just how, how I would want to do it. And then Carolyn Schaefer, I love earth boxes and a gardening stool that moves in any direction for Christmas. Oops, hang on a second here. I only container garden. Yeah, yeah, the earth boxes and, you know, the garden scoot. I think that's the way to go. That, that's how I garden. So that, that would be. And Judy would love potting soil and a propagation mat. You know the pot, the potting soil. I, I don't think we'll, we're going to have a, have an issue with a, as much as other other supplies. I know, like propagation materials, like like propagation mats, heating mats, have been a premium item, and people are buying those. So yeah, that that would be a fantastic gift. Maybe you just need to buy one for yourself, right? You know. I'm just, I'm just saying that could be a possibility too. And then Carolyn Schaefer, I used to have an LSU fig that often turned purple in the fall when the leaves started, started falling, that they were small and didn't ripen any further. So that, that's, that's helping with that, um, with that big question earlier. Now, Jean's got back to us about the um, honey locusts out in the, out in the, the, um, out in the pasture. Goats love to eat them. Raises goats for meat and it'll be a a, a long term a long term snack. You know, I I would my, my suggestion for that is you you're going to have to find somebody that that's that's growing them. You might find like some liners. You might try like the Forestry Commission. They they do they do liner production or they they work with nurseries that do liner production. Contact a, lo a local independent nursery. Maybe they can help you out with that. But it would just be sourcing the plants and getting getting them, putting them out, and planting them. I think that would be all that you would that that you would need. Now, now, Jane, ha have you ever used a trach? Love mine. Listen, Jane, you're going to have to send me a picture of that, okay? Because I'm we have no earthly idea what that is. I'm going to be looking it up when we get done here. I know maybe maybe Ellen could look that up and and share a picture hint hint if if you could do that so we'll we'll see okay Jean Boyer my Merliton has lots of flowers no fruit yet flowers fall off what's happening um good good question we tried a Merliton study here. At, at, at coastal several years ago and it didn't get good results and i haven't grown any since then um our, our now question i have our, our merlitons male female plants is is that is that the issue um that would be something that i would have to, i'd have to research that so gene if you want to send that question to me to southern gardening at msstate.edu, that's the best. That's the best way, and I'll and I'll take a look at it, and I'll get I'll get you get you an answer for that. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. Now, Christy, I pulled some seed pods from our huge old family wisteria vine. How do I prepare the seeds to plant, and when should I plant them? Well, what what you should do, Christy, is those seed pods. Clean the pods and get the seeds out of there. And you're going to want to put those in in the refrigerator in, in the vegetable bin in a you know you know in a um, in a ziploc with a with a moist uh, paper towel. And you're probably going to want to get those cold for about six weeks. And then after six weeks, you go ahead. You could put them put them right in the ground if you want, but you might you might end up weeding it if they germinate. I would put them in small in small pots like. 
do I have a small pot here? Uh, I guess I guess I don't. I'm I'm kind I'm kind of li- I'm kind of limited to um, to how how far I can wander here today with um, with with the te- with a technology issue that we've got going. But potting mix in a small pot and um, go ahead and germinate them that way. That that would probably be the best way to do that. And Sharon's asking how to spell that Dewitt tool. Okay, here you go. It's H O R I H O R I. Thank you, Ellen. She she was right on it. She knew that was coming. Uh, then, then Karen Ladner, what is the best time of year to move hydrangeas? <coughs> really, the fall of the year is fan, is fantastic. You know, I would I would say any time between now and February would would be great. Um, you you might want to go out there now and start digging around the root system with the shovel, and then it's leaving it in place. And then in a month or two, go ahead and pull that out because the that hydrangea will have started to regenerate some of the roots that you cut, and it, it, it might survive a little better for you. So so that that would be the timing that I would do. Uh, yeah, and and Gene, um, th- this this was this was a good um, good comment. Thanks, Ellen. It's a good save. Um, Dr. Rocky Lemus is our um, is one of our forage specialists and he would be a good resource because he raises goats. So he, he would, he'd be speaking your language on that. So that, that's, that's, that's a great suggestion. Thanks Ellen for doing that. And then Gail, good morning. I would love a seeding kit. Yeah. And, and talking about seeding kits, let's, let's talk a little bit about some gifts again. Um, now is a great time. And I got, and I got I got to show you. I, I am already buying seeds uh, for, for next year. Seed companies ran out again this year. I don't I don't think you should you should wait. Um, and so I, I've been I've been getting some seeds from Botanical Interest. It's a neat little company from out from out west. And here's a really slick um, potato that we're going to try and grow this year. This is a potato that you start from seed, not from cutting up the, um, the seed potatoes you buy at the, at the feed and seed. This was, a, this was an All-America winner in 2019. So we're gonna go ahead and, and give this a try. Now, there's 12 seeds in this packet. It was $3.89. So just, just, to, just to let you know, some of these specialty seeds are a little more expensive, but I think it's gonna be worth it. And we're going to plant these. I've got a bunch of grow bags this year. We're going to give them a try, and we'll we'll see we'll see how that works. Um, another one that I I picked up. This is one that's a basil called. What is that? Purple Petra, a dark purple basil. Um, I've I've shown on the daily doses that we like to make purple basil mojitos from fresh grown. Um, uh, fresh grown basil here at the urban nano farm is is fantastic. Let's see what else do I got here? I, I guess that's all I, I got to show off from botanical interest. But I've also got a pack of a seed pack delivery from Baker's Creek, and I, I do I do like I do like peppers, and yeah, I just got some some of these. This, this one is, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, but this one's, the common name is Spanish Mama. These are six to seven inch long cone-shaped peppers. They're, they're really grown for frying type um, blistering on the grill. And this variety was first in the market before 1860. So I, th- I think that, that that's a really cool thing to do. An- another one that we got, this one's called Yellow Monster. Eight inches long, four inches wide. That's a big pepper, and we'll tr- we'll try to see what that ha- what that does. Um, th- this is here's here's one. Well, as I'm I'm reading the back here, a Javarsky pepper. This is from Macedonia, and this is a um, six to seven inch deep red roasting pepper. They at Baker's Creek, if you buy enough from them, they send you gift packs. And here's a radish, Japanese wasabi, and love wasabi. Going to see what a what a um, wasabi radish um, tastes like. And then this is one Reza 
Macedonian. This one was interesting to me. And you can, you can see all those, those striations on that pepper. Um, this is the same kind of thing that we talked about in the daily dose where we were talking about jalapeno peppers and what are those longitudinal streaks that you get on them. And it's from the, um, the skin of the pepper splitting and, and it's called corking as the, as the pepper is starting to repair the um, splits. But, but this one, instead of longitudinal splitting, it does it radially around the, around the pepper. Doesn't affect the taste. I just think it's really cool looking. And, and so we're, we're going to uh, we're going to try this. And the description is spectacular, long red embroidered pepper. So that that's that's going to be a that's going to be a, a fun pepper that we'll be sharing this next year. But it's just to kind of the prime the pump a little bit. To, you know, if you're going to buy seeds, don't wait till the first of the year. You know, there's no need to wait for all the piles of seed catalogs to show up in the mail. I mean, I like going through the seed catalogs too, but there's no need to wait for that. Go online, order now. I know some of the varieties I was trying to get for next year were already sold out. So this just tells me there's going to be a high demand for seeds don't don't waste any time. Just go just go ahead. Just go ahead and get them. Okay, so where the heck did we leave off here? Okay, Gail, a seating map. La Debra would love raised garden boxes for Christmas. I assume you're talking about the earth boxes. They are a fantastic a fantastic gift. And if anybody wants, you know, earth boxes, the easiest way to do it is to go right to the source. Go online and www.earthbox.com. That, that's, the, that's the best way to get those. You'll get the best price and may even get some before Christmas. And, okay, and, and Levon, what causes Satsumas to have thick peelings? The fruit is juicy and fine. Most are thin and easy to peel. You know, I have, I have seen that and... I'm trying to remember if if it's if it's a if it's more more of a disease type of happening early that happens early on in the development or if it's an environmental cause. But I, I've got one tree out there now that, that's got the kind of those big, you're gonna call them corky um, um, peels on them. Yeah, and, and the fruit the fruit's still good on the inside. Um uh, uh, Levant, send me an email, southerngardeningmsstate.edu, and I and I will get you that information, okay? Because you you've reminded me that I need to look it up too. Okay, so let's let's see here. And Sue is asking where to get the shelves in my patio. <laughs> are, you, are you talking about these back here? Um, let me let me see here. Hang on a second. I'm I'm going to go rogue here and pull pull my pull my camera off. Let's see here. Yeah, we we can we can we can do it like that. We can do it like this. the The shelves are 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 just um, shelving brackets. See sh sh shelving brackets here, and and just and just and just white shelves. There, there's the there, there, there there's the 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 brand of shell from Rubbermaid, and the edges on here are just the um, PVC pipe insulation that you can get at the um, hardware store. I kept hitting my head on the edges of those, and Kate got tired of me swearing every time I hit hit my head, so we had to make bumpers so Gary doesn't injure himself. But that, that's what it is. That was just an idea that that I that I've had to um, just kind of li li liven up the back porch here with with house plants and interior plants. Okay, so okay, so Kelly, I'm growing magnolias from seed and currently have them in pots in my house. When is the best timed season to? Kelly, did you, did you send me a question on this? I seem to remember a, a question almost exactly exactly like this. Tips how how to when when to plant them out. They're about seven months post germination. I I would get them outside, um, 
and and start getting them acclimated. They they sh- they should they should be fine outside. Um, you know, if if you're worried about you know cold nights, they're in pots. Just bring them inside till the cold passes. But I, I would I would I would put them outside. That that that's that's what I would do. Okay, from Gail. Why do you think fungus moss grows on some trees and bushes, and how do you control it? Brilliant question. I had that on my list to um, talk about here this morning. The fungus moss that Gail's talking about is actually, it's called lichen. And my, my um, Southern Gardening column that I wrote this week or last week was, deal, was dealing with lichen. Lichen is a naturally occurring organism. It's a combination of a fungus and an algae that, that live in a symbiotic relationship. They don't cause problems on our trees and tr- trees and shrubs. They're strictly living on the bark surface, and the um, the algae photosynthesizes, provides food. The fungus it you know sends its little tendrils out and harvests water and other nutrients. So so they they work to, they work together to survive. We start seeing it really in the fall of the year when our tree canopies start to thin out and more sunlight gets into the interior parts of the tree or shrub, which then the lichen is seeing as more sunlight, it's photosynthesizing more and it starts to grow more. It's also an indicator of a tree or shrub that's under some kind of stress. And when a tree or shrub is under stress, the canopy thins out and more sunlight gets in. And when people see this for the first time, they think that's what's killing the plant. No, no, no. It, it, lichen does not harm the plants at all. I like to think of lichen be, just because it's kind of gray-green in color. It's kind of like Mother Nature's patina out in the garden. I, I think it's I think it's a, a good one. Yeah, th- thanks for putting that, um, that, that link up there, Ellen. And, and it's interesting, the pictures on that that are associated with that column are on some of my citrus trees in my yard. So it's, it's, it's something that's just indigenous. There's no control needed for it. And even if you could control it, I mean, I've seen people go out and with scrub brushes and scrub it off, it's just going to come back. So if, if you're seeing it on trees and shrubs, Take a look at those and see if they're under some kind of stress. And ju- just as one more point that the lichen doesn't harm um, plants, lichen grows on rocks, lichen grows on fence posts. I've shared pictures in the past of lichen growing on a satellite dish. So it's just, lichen just wants a surface to, to live on and, and car- carry out its life. So yeah, so there's really nothing that you need to do with that, Gail. Okay, so Carolyn, I'm I'm curious about how well the edge of Arsky pepper works for you. I, I was disappointed in it. Okay. Yeah, I haven't grown it before. I just saw it and I, I like to I like to grow odd peppers, specialty peppers, and we'll we'll give it we'll give it a give it a try. And Betty Davis. Hey Betty, how are you? I like the red foliage of bull's blood beets, tiny round carrots. And I'm looking forward to growing watermelon radishes. Good deal. I hope you have all those seeds by now. And Bonnie, let's see here. Mature Satsuma had wonderful Satsumas two years ago and nothing the past two years. Wondering why? You, you know, I, I, want, I wonder why too. I've, I've got, I don't know, close to 20 different citrus here. And, and I, here in my yard, and I notice that the trees kind of go through cycles and what, whether it's something that happened when it was flowering or I think this past year, because we had such a brutal late winter that, that affected plants. But, but I, I, I see trees go through, you know, the, the, no, no satsumas, lots of satsumas, kind of like an alternate bearing, you know, phenomenon that we, that we see in like a lot of oak trees. Go, go through that too. Um, all, all, I, all I can tell you is keep the nutrition up, make sure it's, you know, you're watering it enough and just, just keep your fingers crossed. I, I don't think there's any, any magic to it. I, I think it's really how they're treated 
weather, weather included. So, yeah, let's see here. Okay, yeah, there, there's the link to the Southern Gardening column. Yeah, Sue Wessing, buying canning jars and seeds right now. Couldn't get them last fall. Jars at Ace Hardware cheaper than online. Yeah, that that's one thing. If if you're a canner, like you know, I've I've said in the past, Kate and I are like getting ready for the zombie apocalypse. You know, with with canning and preserving almost everything that we grow. Yeah, the last two years have been challenging looking for jars. Um, we're we're seeing more at the stores here this fall, but at, but as we were at the store um, this past weekend looking at them. Oh yeah, boy! Look, they got some jars out there now, and it's like, yeah, you know, just wait till spring when there's a run on them again. So yeah, if if you're gonna can, look look for jars now, look for lids now, look for canning supplies now. They're 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 more plentiful now than they have been all year. So so kind of get ahead on that also. Let's see. For a gift, I would like to have a microgreen garden. Oh yeah, Marge, that is that's fantastic. Um. There, there are a couple of MSU publications that would really help you get started with that. Um, the, I wrote both of those. I was, I was one of the first microgreen growers here on the Gulf Coast in 2009, and and I've been, I've been, I've been growing now for um, oh golly for 12 years now, and and still grow. And so, so a couple of publications, kind of how to do it, kind of what what um, various uh, microgreen um, seeds you can get. Listen, if, if you'll send me an email to southerngardening at msstate.edu, I'll send you the links to those two publications. Oh, you already got them there, Ellen? Growing microgreens for the Mississippi Gardener. Yeah, then the other one's microgreen variety for the Mississippi Gardener. So th thanks for doing that. Also, since we're talking microgreens, let, let, me, sh let me show you some, you know, we're talking about gifts. Some of the um, the great microgreen supplies that that I that I've been accumulating the last couple of years. A um, couple of years ago, I found a company called Bootstrap Gardener, and they make they make um, trays <clears throat> that are extra heavy duty and they last a lot longer than, than, the, than the standard um, black, black trays do in the nursery trade. Uh, this is the, the, the deep ones, kind of the standard 1020 is where, is where I started with that. And, I, and I've recently gone to these shallow trays for microgreens. And then to grow microgreens, they have um, these five by five containers these are really heavy duty. I love these. I'll never have to buy another set of these again. These are so heavy duty. But just recently, I, I found that they had these little short um, containers. And, and look at that. With, with the mesh on the bottom, this is perfect for microgreens. And you can do a whole tray. These fit eight. These fit eight to a tray, so you can do eight different varieties without getting them all mixed up. That that's one thing that I really like. They also make really heavy duty humidity domes with um, with vents on them, which which are which are really nice. I'm never going to have to buy humidity domes again. I, my last now my last cheap sets lasted 14 years. They were all falling apart. I was taping them together. This this one. Is, is not is not going to fall apart. And another thing I like about this, and I'm, I'm kind of stuck here, is these little five by five containers. They make little humidity domes for little five by fives, so you don't have to take up a lot of space on your rack if you're if you're um, propagating something. Here, and I've got some I've got some beautyberry in there right now, and it's it's just working great. And it has the, um, the the venting on top too. So bootstrapfarmer.com um, products are a little more expensive, but they're but they're made to last. Right, you get what you pay for, right? Okay. So what else? What else we? What else do we got here? Yeah, love the thicker growing containers. What's the link? Yeah, Betty, j just look up Bootstrap Gardener or send me an email. I'll I'll send I'll send you the information. But but all, all these all these products that that I 
that I talk about that I think are great. These are things that I use in my garden, you know, and, and if you follow Southern gardening, especially the daily doses of Hort, I, sh I show you how I garden and, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly and, and, and the like. Um, another thing that I've been doing this year is I've been more proactive about sun protection, um, dealing with, with, um, with skin cancer issues. So, so some great, couple of great gifts. Um, the Tilly hat, love, love the Tilly hats. Been, been wearing these now, oh God, for about, oh, about 12 years now. Love these, different styles, different, um, different fabrics. One thing I like about these, they're guaranteed for life. If, if you lose this, they'll replace it. You generally have price. If you damage it beyond repair, you send them pictures, send it back to you, they will replace the hats for you for just shipping charges. So to totally worth it. Um, a I, uh, item that people have been interested in is I've started wearing sleeves out in the garden and for, for strict, strictly for, for sun protection. And I, I get these from Farmer's Defense. And these are sleeves that just go on. Just go on like this. They provide 50 SPF protection. They come in fun patterns. Or if you just like solid colors, they, they come in those, in those colors too. But that's from FarmersDefense.com. Those are, those are great gifts for... Oh. Probably somebody's trying to call right in the middle of this, ask me anything. Can you believe that? Um, then the, the, the last thing I've got here just to show is, is a, it's a garden apron from Dram. Um, Dram has been very um, generous in supplying uh, product that I, that I give away um, during my talks and on, the, on these um, ask me anythings. But the Dram makes all the watering supplies and make great garden supplies and, and the great pruners that I've shown in the past. So Dram is is an is another another um, another another place to go. Let's see here. And I I think for that right now I am almost out of battery life on my com computer, and I, I I think you know we've been going almost fifty minutes now. Why, why don't we just go ahead and say adios? If anybody's got any other questions, send them to southerngardening at msstate.edu. I'll answer those. I'll, I'll go through all the questions that, that we've had um, today. And, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll you know, run the, the, the fancy wheel of fortune and see who wins the, um, the prize this week. It, it's going to be a surprise. We're talking Christmas. The, pro the, the giveaway this week is going to be a surprise when the lucky winner gets it for that. So anyways, thanks for joining me, guys. It's always fun to do this. And, you know, have a happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you on the other side. And I'm horticulturist Gary Bachman. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you later.